seems to be retina 2 a week for me this one arrived from Germany I think what's its problem well I was told that the counter was no good frame counter was no good film advance was no good and sure enough the frame counter is not working so probably a broken spring but it's got other problems the shutter doesn't cock correctly yeah it cocked that time it actually closed I've had this warmed up oh, it's stuck open now it's just closed there again now so the shutter's sticky certainly oiled up let's have a look at the state of those blades You can see those marks there between the edges of the blades, so that's definitely oil. Let's see if we can get this thing stuck open. There we go. You can see those greasy marks on the blades there. That's oil on the blades, that was just gluing them shut. I've given this some severe hair dryer treatment where well, you can see they're still stuck open there and um, it didn't really respond let's have a quick look in there and see what's going on right start with a screwdriver just get take that off so the shutter is well and truly gummed up Take off the speed settings cam plate there and let's remove one or two pieces. I'm going to take the main lever out, I think. That's the main spring that drives the action of the shutter. But it doesn't do anything about shutting, closing the shutter blades. That all happens here. And as you can see, this is exceptionally reluctant to move. We know the blades are oily. They're certainly sticky and causing problems. I'm going to remove this arm and see if the blade actuating ring by itself moves with the blades. I was looking at the uh, wiggle here when I took the spring off it that's not sticking so that's not it the problem is the blade actuating ring or the shutter blades that's just incredibly gummy um, I haven't seen one as well stuck like that for a while oh might as well start with the shutter on this one right the shutter's out of the body Ah, that rear lens group is really reluctant to move. I'll need a spanner to get that off. This one will do. Yeah, that lens. There's a lot of fluff and rubbish on there, which suggests to me that someone's had the uh, lens off the front for a little look to see what they could see let's just carry on here here's our spacers our shims at the back now we've got two quite thick metal ones there and a paper one that's more shims than you commonly see now let's have a look at this okay so there's a screw missing here the other screw is present. Let's get that screw out. I'll have to find a replacement for that missing one. It's a very, it's very short screw for its size. That one. Slide this case off. Undo this screw to release that flash. C 
sink wire. That should be sufficient. Right, unhook that. Pop that to one side. Take out that. That's the detents for the uh, aperture settings. Let's remove some stuff from the front of the shutter. I'll zoom you in a bit. You're a bit far away there. That's probably good. The shutter release lever was a big dirty mark over that. Oil, I think. The B lever. Let's have that off. Put some of these pieces in a container before I scatter them everywhere and lose something. This spring here is bent. That's the spring that holds the latch, which holds the shutter here. That this piece that holds the shutter cocked. That spring's bent. That's um, certainly need to be put straightened back out. Right, let's take this flash sink mechanism. Off, so I'll just remove that spring. Those screws are unusually tight. Lift this off the two posts. It doesn't want to lift. That's better. Excuse me, just gummed up a bit, I think, probably with oil. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. There's oily marks on that little piece. Out with those pallets. Off with the arm for the flash contact and the flash contact itself. Off with the high-speed spring. Off with the wheel that drives the pallet wheel. Let's get the flash contact out. So I'll take this screw out of the side. Now there should be a little black plastic insulating slug in there. I think it is present. That's good. Remove this single screw that holds that in place. This is the plastic piece. Um, very vulnerable to solvent damage. Every now and then I get one that somebody has decided that flood cleaning the shutter would be a clever thing to do. And they've done it with this piece in place and it turns to sort of a shapeless spludge. Right, I'll loosen up these screws at the back because that flash contact doesn't want to come out and it might need to be wriggled. These, this will give me a bit more wriggle room. Anyhow. It is reluctant. I'm just pushing at the edge of that with the tip of my screwdriver. It's not really moving very much. Oh, it is. It is moving. It's just reluctant to come come here. Alright, we'll leave that there for the moment. Let's have a look at this. There's no danger of anything moving there. That is just really gummed up. Let's split it. Have a look at that mechanism plate. I'm interested to see whether... You can see those shutter blades are quite oily there at the back. They've got quite an oily sheen to them. 
I'm interested to see whether the problem is mostly the shutter blades or mostly the blade actuating ring. Because it could certainly be that. Right, let's split the case. Here we go. Here's our case with a diaphragm in it. Those blades are very oily. You can see the sheen on those blades. Here we've got the blade shutter blades. Now that's just about liquid oil on those blades. You can get that flash contact loose now from the mechanism plate. Nothing is holding that down. Bit of stiction and that's about it. Right, really doesn't want to lift off. Take it out sideways. And there's the plastic insulator slug, we'll keep that. Right, this blade actuating ring. Now that, that moves freely enough. So our problem simply was that these shutter blades were just glued together with oil. Well that's one of the oiliest ones I've seen in a wee while. The mechanism plate I'll have apart because I need to clean all this. But now I can be happy now that the blade actuating ring, there was nothing wrong with that. Oh, it, it's dirty and it's sticky but that was not really the major contributing factor here. I'm going to remove the retaining ring here and the blade actuating ring so I can clean everything thoroughly. If you don't do things like that then there could easily be loose oil underneath that plate which would make its presence felt at a later date and you'd be back with oily shutter blades again. Yeah this is quite oily, it's sort of got a, I don't think you can tell here in the camera, but it's sort of got a yellowish tinge to it, well that's just oil, it should be sort of bright, a bluish silvery colour the aluminium here, but really it's, it's yellowish in most of those areas. And the retired gear train, what's that like? Well it's very quiet, now that's the first indication that it's got oil is on all the surfaces when it runs very quietly. And it does. The blade actuating ring, quite dirty. The retaining plate, much worse. Um, there's a lot of rubbish on there. Yeah, that's just oily stuff. You can write your name in that. So that's just dried grease and rubbish. So that's certainly a problem. The diaphragm blades. They're pretty oily. Let's get this apart. So here I'm just removing the settings lever. Yeah, look at the discoloration on that. That's oil. See all that yellow colour there? Right, three screws hold the retainer plate in place. And my video camera is shouting at me that its batteries are tired. This could stop at any second. Yeah, there's certainly running oil inside that case. And here's our rosette of uh, diaphragm blades. Now even if they were dry and clean they'd come out like that if they're that much closed up. But these are sticking together. You can see that oil on those blades. Well I've been busy cleaning things while you weren't watching. Let's see if we can get this diaphragm together for a start. Everything was very oily and 
Some of those oil deposits didn't really respond particularly enthusiastically to the naphtha and I used another solvent instead to get these pieces free of oil. What I used was CRC ElectraClean. And it did a very good job. But it's not something I'd use every day, not in that quantity. So as I'm putting these di diaphragm blades in, I've got to move back the first few blades I've put in to expose the holes for seating the remaining blades. One more to go. This is um, a job where you've just got to be patient. It doesn't always go well. Sometimes you have to start again. That's okay. It's just time. Now yeah, hopefully though none of those blades were displaced. And I can put the moving plate in place. Going to get it, all of those little pivot posts up through the plate here. Some of them are not where I want them to be, which is not a might mean nothing at all, or it might mean that something's popped out of place. That's it, they're all sitting correctly. Now I've got to get the, the case over the top. So I've got to line up the holes. Wiggle that into place, I had that sort of drop into position. I can flip this on my jig. And I can see some of those blades are not sitting in there. The pivots aren't sitting in the holes correctly. Looks like only, a two, only two of them are like that by the looks of it. I was able to pull them into, into line. Now where's that countersunk head screw? That goes into that hole because that's countersunk. Yeah, the uh, video camera gave up while I was talking earlier. Battery was flat. I knew it was going flat, but I thought I'd get the next minute or two in before it stopped. I was wrong. All of these components are quite stained with oil. Oil as it, as it ages 
and then with it oxidizes something like that but you're left behind with a uh, like a lacquer it'll leave like a lacquer behind which is very reluctant to move let's see how this goes yeah that, they're moving and that's all in place all of the blades present and correct if I've got a circle I'm seeing nothing hanging back no that looks good I can tighten up those three screws now I'll check that again it's a little bit stiff um, I'm not sure why that should particularly be like that I don't think there's any more to come off there I'll just try a bit more solvent on those blades just see if any of those marks will come off and there's not much coming off that's staining rather than oil it's not um, Now um, I'm happy with that, the blades are moving quite freely, that's good. So the control ring for that, that can go on. And I'll be looking for my block of wood here shortly, so I better find that. There it is. So the control ring, just looking at the state of this, this has almost always got some distortion to it. It's much less important with a Retina 2A that's got some sort of click stops to the diaphragm than earlier Compour rapid shutters where there were no click stops. Get this around the right way. It goes that way up. Yes. And line up the holes. Lined up the holes. And there are two screws that go in there. I'm supporting this with my fingers from the back. I just want to get the screws started. That's one. This is the second one. Okay, now I'll support this on the block of wood from below so that I'm not bending anything when I'm pressing on the screwdriver. And I can do those two screws up in nice and snug. Don't over tighten those screws. It's quite a small thread. It's going into a very thin lever here at the back. Um, it's easy to strip it out. And if you strip it out, which is not at all uncommon. The only way to keep everything together is to rivet the screws over. Yeah. You don't want to do that because it makes it hard for the next person coming along who's got to service the camera. Okay, so there's our shutter case. The diaphragm's back in it. Nice and clean, free from oil, moves smoothly. Uh, should be good. So the mechanism plate. Let's have a look at this. That's quite oily, quite dirty. I'll have to clean this. So, naphtha and a cotton bud, I think, in the first instance. The grease that's on here uh, will mostly have dried out. It won't be acting much as a lubricant, it's more like a wax. Uh, the, there shouldn't be loose oil floating around on a thing like this. Now that spring there was bent, so I've got to remember to straighten that one up. It's got absolutely no tension in that position. So I'm cleaning carefully around the lens tube in the centre here. 
that's where the main lever runs around that lens tube and if it's gummy with dried out old grease then the main lever won't move freely and quickly enough and your shutter speeds will be adversely affected. I'm cleaning the inside of the lens tube, you can see there's a lot of oil and dirt in there. That's where the lens screws in. And it's quite oily, you can see the yellow colour there, it's quite a bit of oil contamination. And then on the back of the mechanism plate, this will need swabbing well. It's, there's quite a bit of oil here, it uh, imparts a sort of a yellow colour to the aluminium. It's not hard to see that it's there. And all of this should be clean and free from oil. The blade actuating ring is, can be lubricated with um, graphite grease sparingly or you can lubricate it dry with graphite powder and I frequently do that, probably most frequently do that. You can lubricate it with a bit of molybdenum paste. You don't put oil on it and you probably don't want to put use other grease on there if you have any sus reason to suspect that it is prone to not staying where it's put and migrating to other areas because you can be rest assured that it'll end up on your shutter blades if you if it given half the chance This channel around the inside edge here, this is where the blade actuating ring runs. So I'm just making sure that's clean. And the retard gear train, I'll clean that by flushing it with naphtha, working it repeatedly. Blowing that out. And blowing out the naphtha the naphtha that's absorbed the oil, you're removing the oil completely. If you just flush it with naphtha, work it a few times and leave the naphtha to evaporate, it will evaporate okay and it'll leave the oil exactly where you found it pretty much once it's evaporated. So by blowing it out, carries away with it any oil or other de debris that it's picked up. And that's running much freer now. You can tell by the sound of that that it's not all oiled up, which is exactly what I want. Now I've got a uh, particularly useless camera battery in the camera at the moment, and even though I've only been here 10 minutes, it's already complaining that it's flat. This could stop at any moment. Again, put the blade actuating ring in. The retainer. The retainer's got one rivet on the underside here which locates it. So you can't fit it in the wrong place. The screws, there are four screws. Three of them are shorties, one of them's long. Um, it's worth taking note of where the long one goes and you can you can mark the shutter so you know where to put it back it actually goes in this position no one has done marked this previously but it's not uncommon to find little scratch marks around the uh, place where people have marked it 
to remind themselves that that's where the long screw or the short screw or some other special detail goes. Just I'll get these three short screws in position. screw goes here and these are enthusiastic to start today I'm not sure why that is All four screws in position, I can tighten them up. The, the camera's just stopped recording then, I think I hit the end of uh, file size limit or time limit. All the battery's going flat, the battery is going flat but that's not enough to shut it down. I'll be back when I've changed the battery. Those four screws are all in place and tightened up. Now I'll put the lever on the top here now. And I'll use a bit of molybdenum paste on the pivot and where it runs on the pin on the lever. Get this in place. The mechanism plate I'm going to lubricate with a bit of graphite powder. I'm going to lubricate the blade actuating ring here and the retard gear train there. Okay, well that all done. I've lubricated that with a graphite powder, blown out the excess, let's unhook this, swing this out into the blade's open position and start putting my shutter blades in place. And the shutter blades start here with number one. It's number two. Number three. Number four, we're still in the picture, only just. Pretty good at wriggling out of the picture. Number five, they're all in place. Let's put the case on the top and get this thing closed up. So you can line up the square hole and the square hole. Get this case down into position. That lever is sticking out. That's not right. Yeah. I'm just going to squeeze that between finger and thumb and check that I haven't displaced anything. See if that moves and the blades close, they do, so that's good. I hadn't. I was concerned that I might have displaced one of those blades while I was wriggling that case over. It wasn't the case. Get three screws in and I'll do these up very lightly, check the shutter action again. If the shutter action is good, I'll tighten the screws right up. That looks good. Let's hook the return spring on there. That's all nice and fresh and snappy in its action. That's how it should have been. 
before I started but it wasn't and that was simply the oil the oil on those shutter blades was enough to stop it being able to open and close correctly well that's quite good and I think that's enough for now so I'm just going to pop this lot away my day is done more work tomorrow.